I posted an ironic video earlier today where I sort of mock celebrated the 25k milestone that was crossed by Millennial Woes, the alt-right YouTuber, this week. All joking aside, I have noticed on Twitter tonight that there has been push from people via petition to de-platform Donald Trump, uh, Richard Spencer, so on and so forth. I think it was because Jack, who runs Twitter, made a announcement about, excuse me, made a, a proclamation in the face of this Muslim ban that the Trump administration passed that um, <clears throat> at Twitter it supports immigrants. Facebook, Zuckerberg and Facebook made a similar statement clarifying their position on the immigration ban from selected majority Muslim nations. So, how do I feel about no platforming in general? Well, there is a case to be made that Twitter at some point has become a public space, that it has become such a ubiquitous means of speech that social media, access to social media could be considered a human right. So, Trump aside, you know, he's the President of the United States, right? Do I think that Donald Trump's personal Twitter is up for debate? Sure. You know, fuck his personal Twitter. Um, as far as the President of the United States being able to communicate with people through uh, that major platform, I, I think that he should be allowed to speak through the POTUS Twitter account. I think that's a, a civic good. If only for the presidents that come after, you know, uh, this is one of those uh, moments where you have to accept that the rain falls on the just and unjust alike. And in order for people to criticize the President of the United States, he has to have an official public Twitter, but not his private Twitter. As a private citizen, Donald Trump is not entitled to free speech rights that supersede uh, an absolute public venue meaning a courthouse or, you know, in public, uh, at a protest or something like that, that you know, the, the police taking away his right to speak or, you know, federal agencies gagging him or something. that That's a violation of freedom of speech. But violating TOS and getting your ass kicked off of Twitter is not having your rights taken away. Right, So a lot of what Trump has said, the more controversial stuff, could violate the basic terms of service on Twitter regarding disparaging uh, groups of people or religions. It's intolerant language. There, there is, a, there is a, a way to report people for using intolerant language on Twitter. And it is, it is a valid reason to, at the discretion of the platform remove people who are subverting the community guidelines. 
But as far as Richard Spencer on Twitter, he is verified. In my, what I can see, in, in, in my opinion, is that the, the verification check on Spencer is so that you have a direct means of where to point your middle finger. So I have no problem with Spencer being on Twitter, and I have no problem with Spencer being verified. I want to know who the real Nazi is where and when I want to uh, address my grievances with that community. So... No platforming for public individuals. You have to think about what is going to become of that space when that individual leaves. No platforming for private individuals. I don't really give a shit if Nazis get to talk. But I would make a case that deplatforming someone like Richard Spencer or even even Milo Yiannopoulos. I'm going to separate Milo Yiannopoulos because Milo Yiannopoulos is not a Nazi. He's a nationalist, xenophobe. But he still engages in hate speech. He still engages in speech that, speech that could be categorically classified as hate speech. So I I would avoid endorsing no platforming if only for the fact that we should have a means to speak back to people like this and challenge them and shame them and Make sure we're addressing the, the right person for the right reason. Now, on to the 25K subscriber milestone for Millennial Woes. Why do I think Millennial Woes should be deplatformed from YouTube? Okay. YouTube is a monetized space. Not only do you speak here, but you get paid to do so. And even if you don't make money from advertising revenue, let's say that uh, YouTube has had the good taste and discretion to look at the content that Millennial Woes uploads and even though there's a demand for it, they're not going to run any fucking ads on his creepy Nazi monologues. Well, he can still use the platform to monetize hate speech in a big way that, that doing these poetic infused hate diatribes can be his full time job and beyond think about if two years from now millennial woes reaches 25k 100 150,000 this is a global platform I would not be shocked if you can find 500,000 ethno-statist genociders from all over the globe to come watch those videos. Those videos do not have a right to exist on this private platform if it is going to make money Potentially, for a movement that is intent on committing hate crimes, vandalism. This, this, the the part of the 
white ethno status that we see speak on YouTube, th that's just, um, that's topping. That's frosting. The cake are, is like these gun stockpiling, sig hiling, uh, you know, vandals, brutes in uh, Europe and, and the West who run around uh, beating down refugees, uh, you know, these, these people, Golden Dawn and Greece and stuff like that. So let the president talk. Fuck his private Twitter. Let me get at Spencer and remind people that he cried in public. But YouTube is a means of making money off of dangerous hate speech. Fuck millennial woes. Fuck his 25,000 subscribers. Deplatform that motherfucker. Lock him up and throw him in jail.